All right, so welcome back. So in this one, we are going to talk about the delay number two and delay number one. Now, I am assuming that you're here because you're starting with delays and uh, you don't have a lot of experience, because if you do, you're going to find this very boring. The delay number one and two are very simple. So again, if you're a newbie, uh, which is cool, that's why I'm making this video. Just stay and you're going to find this delays really cool. Now, just to skip the obvious, the obvious control that uh, all the delays have, you have a feedback control and a mix control. Now, as you know, or you might not know, a delay, what it will do, it will copy your incoming signal. Now, I have a snare right here. That's the snare. It will just grab that snare, make a copy, and it will just play back that copy after a certain period of time. Could be milliseconds or could be a second or whatever. Now, the mix control that you have right here, this mix control, will decide how many, uh, how much of that copy you want to hear or how much of the original, because right now you have two. You have the original and the copy. So by greater values, you hear more of the copy. And by going to the left, you hear more of the original. If you put it on 50%, just middle, you can hear uh, the uh, same volume for your original and the same one for your copy. Now, the uh, delays, when they uh, make this copy, the copy has the ability to feedback itself. So the feedback control, it will just do that. It will control how much feedback you get. For example, uh, the copy, can create a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy. And it's like uh, getting an echo, you know, when you shout to your ca to a canyon and you get that echo, echo, echo. Well, this is, this is the same thing with the delay, is that feedback. So right here, if you go to lower values, you, you're not gonna get a, a lot of echo, but if you go to all, all the way up, you're gonna start to get a, an echo and it will never stop. That echo will never stop. You're gonna, we're gonna use it in a second. So I wanna talk, uh, I wanna talk about the, what we have right here now. So you can use the delay in two different ways. You can use it as a beat delay, and that's why I have this box that's right here. I'm gonna explain in a second. And then you have uh, the, uh, by milliseconds, you can use it with milliseconds, with actual time. So if I disable this, it means that I can choose right here how much time the delay is gonna wait to play back that copy. So if I play the snare, about three seconds later, we're gonna hear that copy. So I'm gonna go and play it. There you go. And notice right here, it's happening on the second number three. So yeah, you can decide how much you're gonna wait uh, to play that copy. And of course, uh, three seconds is a, a bit too much. Most of the times you will just want to do 700 milliseconds, 500 milliseconds, depends on what you want to do. If I play this, it's gonna be really fast, all right. So the other way you get to do to use it, not with milliseconds, you get it with beats. So notice that you get one till, till 16. I'm gonna go right here, I'm gonna go, and just show you this. Notice that I have a grid right here. This grid is a, is a representation of where is this, this, delay, this copy is gonna be playing. And notice that, of course, your DAW has separations in beats and VARs. So if I, for example, go and say, I want to play the, uh, the copy of the snare on the beat number two, is going to play right here on the number two. Notice that it's very fast. Now, if I do it a little bit more obvious, like going down on tempo, because this, what will do, it will sync with your tempo and it will just do a math operation and decide what's the timing at what your current tempo. So if I lower the, lower the tempo, it doesn't matter. I don't need to adjust the time because it's gonna do that job for me. So if I play it, notice that it exact, uh, we will ex exactly play this on the number two. So, you know, it's perfect. You don't need to do a math operation and decide when you wanna play it. It's always perfect with a beat delay. Now, if I put the number four, it's gonna play on the number four, of course. If I put it on the, I don't know, number eight and go up in tempo, if not, it's gonna be very boring. I'm gonna go and play it. We play it on the number eight. So you, had, you get 16 of this, all right? So again, that's why you get the numbers. Now, uh, what you can do, and I'm gonna go and put it at number four. So if I play it, we know that it's gonna go on number four. But what happens if you want to uh, rush a little bit of that repetition or maybe drag it a little bit. So I'm gonna go right here and you get 30%. So what this is gonna do, it's gonna move the, uh, it's gonna move this, maybe half of this one, maybe a little bit less. So if I play it, notice it's just playing before the number four. So you can rush it or you can drag it. I'm gonna go and go right here all the way to the uh, right. And notice that it's almost playing when reaching number four. So, you know, it's just a, another thing you get uh, with, with the delay. And this is called the offset. Then, 
the other controls you get is going to be the low and the high cut. Now, of course, right now, when we play it, the uh, the repetition, the copy, it sounds exactly like the original, right? So I'm going to go play it. Sounds the same because it's the same. Now, what you can do, they give you the ability to add uh, some cuts. You can cut some frequencies from the lows and some frequencies from the highs. So this is like doing, uh, like using an EQ and doing something like this. You're gonna cut the lows and you're gonna cut the highs. It's pretty much the same thing. Now, if I uh, remove this and play it again, notice it's gonna sound very different, right? Because we are just chopping the lows and chopping the highs. Now you only get a cut for the high and the low, and which is very useful because what it's doing, it's reacting on top of the copy. If I just don't use this and put a delay after the the uh, after the delay, uh, I'm sorry, an EQ after the delay, it will just chop the copy and the original, right? So it just makes no sense, right? So that's why you get a, a cut to the lows and a cut to the highs. So another thing you can do with this one is to use the uh, the effects end, and this is the feedback. Now I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna go and play it with the feedback. Now remember that the feedback is a copy uh, is a copy feedbacking itself. So it creates a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy. Now, uh, maybe I'm gonna put in number two so it can be faster. If I go a little bit up on this one, you can hear that copy feedbacking. All right, so that's what it does. Now, of course, since I'm here, maybe I'm gonna put in 50%, that copy is gonna degrade until it's, uh, you know, silent until the, the volume is just all the way down. And as you go up on this one, you're gonna get more volume on those uh, feedback repetitions. And of course, it's gonna take more time for them to go uh, and shut up. Now, if you go all the way, uh, and this happens on any delay, on all the delays you can think of, uh, the feedback will never stop. I'm gonna play it, it's gonna keep going, keep going, keep going, and it will never stop. Now, I'm pretty sure that when you have some don't have experience and you do this, it's gonna create a problem. Maybe you don't know what you're doing and you think it's frozen, like the computer is lagging and maybe you, you're stopping the playback, but that keeps going. You just need to go down on feedback and it will go off. That's it, that's the solution. All right, and I know this happened to you. Uh, and maybe if you have, if you have experience, uh, you, you remember that this happened to you at the beginning. Just common, happens to everyone just like Neo jumping out of the, uh, the the building. So then you get the FF, uh, the FB effects, and this is the feedback effects. So it will just uh, react, will just work on top of the feedback, right? Which is the copy of a copy of a copy. So for example, if I go and just maybe put something like a curse, not a not an EQ, just a curse, I'm gonna go put it right here. This one will just react on top of the copy, but not the original. So if I play it, notice that we get that uh, echo, that uh, chorus. Let me do it again and add a little bit of feedback. All right. So this effect, you can add it to react on top of the copies, not the original, right? Which is pretty cool because maybe you want to keep the original sound and you want to just do something on the, on the, uh, on the copies. And it will not work if you put it right here at the end because it will work on top of the original and the copies. So this is, you know, this control is just very convenient. So then let me just go right here and delete this ones because we are not gonna use them. We get the other delay. Now, maybe you're thinking, uh, you know, what, what's the, what is different with this delay? You know, it looks much, much more uh, complex. Well, it's really not, it's pretty much the same. We get some other controls right here, but everything else, just the same. You still get your cuts, you still get your mix, you get a width control, which is, uh, it will make the sound a little bit bigger because that's the point of this delay. Notice that you get a left and a right. So this is like two delays stacked on one single unit. So this one, this delay will work on the left stereo, on your left speaker. And if you put headphones, it will really help. And this one will work on the right. So now in the left, you can add some different values right here. And on the right, you can add some other different values. So they have a, an offset of tempo. This one will play on the number three, which is this one and this one on the number four. And I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the number eight and just show you this. Now notice that feedback is all the way down and the crossfit is all the way down. I'm gonna go and play it and it will play on the number three and then the number maybe six. 
So we're gonna go play it. Right. So we get three and we get six. Let's do it again. We're gonna go play it. Three, six. Now notice this is uh, the left, the three, it's on the left because it says left, and the other one is on the right. So your sound, the original, you hear on center if you have mono, and everything else sounds on the sides. That's why this delay, it's very, or, or delay, it's cool when you want to add a little bit of width, and that's why you get a width control. If you go really wide, it's gonna sound wider. All right, so of course, you're not gonna do this in real life. Maybe you want to do three and then the next beat and then play it again, and you're gonna get something better. All right, now, of course, you have the feedback control. So you can add a little bit of feedback just to get some, uh, you know, some better sounding re repetitions. So you're gonna go play it. All right, so let me just do this. And I'm gonna go and put it on the guitar. Maybe on a snare, it's not, it's not that great. I'm gonna go and play it on the guitar, go a little bit up on the feedback, and I'm gonna go and play it. All right. So now if I put it on two, it's gonna be very fast, and I'm gonna leave it in four, so we're gonna get a better delay. All right. So notice again, the mix is all the way half, so we get pretty much the whole volume. So I'm gonna go, hear more of the original, a little bit of the delay, I'm gonna go up on feedback, and I'm gonna do a little bit of cut from the lows and a little bit of cut on the left. It's gonna be now very fast. Now, I'm gonna go and adjust the tempo so we can get a much more real uh, sound because no one uses 40 as beat as a tempo. Maybe 100 and you're gonna get a much better result. Right, much, you know, much better, right? So yeah. So okay, of course, you get other controls. You still get the offset you still get uh, get to uh, adjust this by, by time, but you get the crossfed and you get the rate and you get the detune. So we know that the feedback, it's uh, the copy generating a copy and feedbacking itself, right? So what you can do, and this is what the crossfed is gonna do, you can send uh, that copy to the other side. So that other side is gonna fe be feedbacked by the sound of the left. So if I send something from the left, this sound is gonna to go to the right and it's gonna be feedbacked. And if I send something from the right, it's gonna to go to the left and get that feedback again. So we're gonna get just more. That is, is like, you know, vibrating. And if I go all the way down, you can hear the difference. So we get less. And it's because we are just sending more to the other side and it generates the, this, this kind of behavior. So pretty cool, yeah, a little bit better. So then you get the detune and the rate. Now, these ones are pretty simple. The detune, what it will do, it will just detune your copies uh, a little bit. Just It will just detune them. So if I go a little bit, maybe you're not gonna notice a lot. Maybe go uh, right here, all the way down on the crossbow and go a little bit up with the feedback. And there we go. I'm gonna go and play it and you can just listen to the repetitions. Notice that you get that effect, that it's getting, de getting detuned, and it's because that's what, what it's doing. Now, maybe you're thinking, this sounds like crap, and it does. If you hear this um, alone, it sounds like crap, really, really sounds like crap. But when you go and lower the mix, and you play this in the context of a song, it sounds good. And this is very natural for like delays that are really old, like tape delays that will generate this uh, this type of sound, this kind of a vibration and detuning because the tape is so old. And uh, that's, that's what, what this is trying to do, is trying to uh, emulate this. Now, we are using 22, which is not much. And notice it's detuning by cents, which is much more or less than, than semitones, is the in-between of semitones. So if I play it again, it's a little bit better. Now, if I go all the way up, it's gonna be like kind of a crazy, just too much. All right, so you always need to add a little bit, not too much, just to get a nice, a nice sound, a nice sound out of this. It's not, it's not very noticeable. So the only thing, the other thing is going to do when you use the detune, uh, the rate it will add vibrato to this. If I play it, it is just vibrating. If I go all the way down, 
we don't hear that vibration. So yeah, just you can add a little bit of vibration to the sound, which is sometimes nice. And that's it. That's the delay number two. So pretty much, uh, pretty much equal to the delay number one, but you get some, you know, a couple more other options and you can play with the left and the right. Now, sometimes you're going to be playing, not, not in this case, but you're going to be playing some sounds or a clip that is stereo and you get one sounded left, one sounded right. This one, uh, you can select what you want to listen. If you want to sound to play on the left, to hear or create an, create an effect on the, uh, with the sound, the original sound from the left, from mono or right. So for example, let's say that you have a, you have a clip right here that has a stereo and you have one sound in the left, one sound in the right, but you only want to delay the one in the right. Well, you just grab the one in the right and you the, create that effect. Everything is still going to come out on the left and the right. Right. Okay. So that's cool. And you also get your uh, feedback effects, which is pretty much the same uh, with the delay number one. Okay. So now we're going to go, uh, I'm going to go to the next video. Uh, if you want to go to the next video, because if not, this one is going to get too long and I don't really like that. I'm going to talk about this monster. Now this one looks challenging, but it's super easy to use. It's just like this delay, but of course we get knobs and whenever we see knobs, we go crazy, but it's just four delays stacked in one. This is the feedback we get right here at the bottom. And this one's instead of just feedback or crossfitting to the uh, to cross feeding to the other one, we get a feedback, a cross feed to for the other three. That's it. And everything else is just the same. Here you have the tempo, you have the the uh, the offset, you have the volume, you have the panning. That's it. Kind of a, already explained all of this right here, but that's okay. Let's go to the next one, and I'm gonna show you the delay number four.